right? So 4.2 galvanic cell. So we have three learning objectives for this subtopic. Okay, make sure that you are able to sketch. Okay, uh, you must be able to sketch and then describe the component and operation of the galvanic cell. Uh, this is also one of the commonly asked question in exam. Okay, uh, so you have to sketch the galvanic cell. Uh, apa nama to mention in the question. Okay. Uh, and then you must be able to write a cell notation of the galvanic cell. And then lastly, construct the redox equation from cell notation or from a given diagram of galvanic cell or vice versa. Okay, so these three are uh, very important related to galvanic cell. Okay, you must be able to sketch and then describe the component and then write the cell notation and also from the cell notation or from the diagram of the galvanic cell, you must be able to construct the redox equation. Okay, all right, let's move on to the next slide. Setting up a galvanic cell. So uh, this is the basic of uh, how to set up a galvanic cell. Okay, uh, so galvanic cell is also called a voltaic cell which produces electrical energy through a spontaneous chemical reaction. Okay, remember in the earlier slide, we have learned that uh, galvanic cell um, to, uh, convert the chemical energy into electrical energy through a spontaneous chemical reaction. That means it naturally, uh, the, the energy uh, is uh, apa nama tu created through a spontaneous reaction. Maksudnya dia happen naturally okay, based on the difference in potential energy of the electrode. Okay, alright. So, chemical reaction takes place in its own half cell so that the reactions are physically separated. So, as you can see, this is an example of a galvanic cell or voltaic cell. So uh, uh, the half cell, okay, are separated because in this half cell, in each half cell, um, they take place, uh, sep uh, the, the reaction take place separately. Okay, they tak perlu bercampur pun. So that's why we can separate these two half cell. Okay, all right. Um, and then the half cell consists of an electrode immersed in a solution of ions. So as you and as you can see again, you have uh, uh, you have the electrodes. So electrodes is the solid that is very important for the electron transfer. You need to have an electrode, okay, for the electron to flow. So one of the most important thing that you need to have for your galvanic cell is the electrode because electrode is a solid that allows, okay, this, that that uh, provide a surface. They are the surface to allow the transfer of electron. Okay, uh, so electron nanti akan dikeluarkan from the electrode to the solution and then from the solution into the electrode. Okay, uh, so they can flow through the wire and whatnot. Okay, so that's why uh, we have an electrode and it must be immersed in a solution. So when you draw your galvanic cell, make sure that it is immersed. Jangan terapung-rapung, dia mesti touch the uh, solution. Okay, it must be immersed in the solution of ions. And then the half cells are connected by the external circuit. Okay, so you need to have a wire to connect the two electrodes. And then a salt bridge completes the electrode, the electrical circuit. Okay, so you need to have um, a salt bridge because this complete the electrical circuit because it um, apa nama tu, uh, neutralize the build up of ions. Okay, it neutralize the build up of ions later on, uh, which caused by the uh, apa nama tu, increase ataupun build up of ions bila dia copper becoming copper to plus. So this here become more positive and this here become more negative. So that is what we call build up. Okay, dia dah uh, build up uh, apa nama tu, very positive side and then very negative side. So we don't want that to happen. 
Okay, if that happens, the electron won't flow from the from the negative to the positive. It won't flow. We don't want that to happen. So, in order to maintain the neutrality of the the the, the cell, okay, we need to have this salt bridge. Okay, uh, the, this salt bridge are the ion. So the ion will neutralize the charge build up. Charge build up. Tuh, maksudnya tadi kan dah positif, sangat positif. So the negative ions from the Salt bridge will neutralize the positive side. Same goes to the negative side. Tadi sangat negative because um, apa nama tu loss of uh, positive ions. Okay, so the negative ion from the negative ion from the salt bridge will uh, will will apa nama tu will be moving towards the uh, apa negative side to neutralize the charge build up. Okay. Uh, so that's very basic. That's uh, those are the the basics that you need to have in order to set up a galvanic cell. Okay. Okay. So, macam dalam gambar ni lah. Uh, so you have the cathode. Uh, sorry, you have the anode and also the cathode. Uh, okay. Anode is in uh, for this galvanic cell is copper and cathode in this galvanic cell is. Uh, silver okay and then uh, we have a salt bridge that made up of uh, KNO3 K plus and o and O3 minus and then we have a wire for the electron to flow from the negative electrode to the positive electrode okay and then you need to have the electrolyte okay so the electrolyte is very important uh, uh, for both uh, solution okay so sangat gelap kat sini jap saya nak on lampu okay right okay moving on okay this is um, the detailed description for galvanic cell okay all right so here this part is what we call half cell. Okay, and this is also half cell. Okay, so kita ada dua half cell lah. Uh, so one half cell is where the oxidation takes place. The other half cell is where the reduction takes place. Okay, half cell, a half cell is made by filling a vessel with solution of ion and electrode. Example, one half cell consists of a copper electrode immersed in copper sulfate solution and the other half cell consists of silver electrode immersed in uh, silver nitrate solution. So the two half cell are connected by a salt bridge. Okay, All right. And then we have salt bridge. Um, the salt bridge completes the electrical circuit and allows ion to flow through both half cell. Okay, and then in the salt bridge too, normally we would use salt. Okay, salt that does that will not interfere ataupun disturb ataupun normally the salt is not uh, does not consist of ions uh, that have the, uh, that would be the same as what we have in the half cell dia takkan sama ions dia okay we don't want the in any interruption happening uh, because of the presence of the salt bridge so normally kita make sure kalau copper 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 sulfate then we would use uh, potassium nitrate dia tak ada kena mengena it's not involved in the half cell okay so uh, uh, it completes the electrical circuit and allows ion to flow through both half cells because they're connected kan uh, the salt bridge is also immersed into both half cell so the flow of ions within the salt bridge Okay, the flow of ions within the salt bridge neutralizes this charge build up, allowing reaction to continue. Okay, I will explain again what do you mean, what does it mean by uh, the charge build up here. Okay, so kita kena faham how the galvanic cell works dulu. And then uh, in the first place, uh, apa nama tu, why is there a charge build up? Okay, kenapa ada charge build up berlaku dekat situ? So, kita kena tahu dekat situ. Okay, alright. Allowing reaction to continue. So, charge build up is not good for for a galvanic cell to, to you know, to to function. Uh, so, dia kalau nak function lebih lama, tu dia kalau nak berfungsi lebih lama, 
Okay, we need to clear up this charge build up. Okay, so a salt bridge contains non-reacting, non-reacting cation and ions. Okay, like I've said, uh, like I have mentioned just now, you can jangan sama dengan ions that we have in the half cell. Okay, so oftenly we use K plus and NO3 minus, okay, potassium nitrate lah, dissolve in a gel. Okay, uh, kita tak nak dia kering, that's why kita contain dia dalam gel. Okay, okay ni kot cerita dia, okay. Alright, so as copper is oxidized at the anode, okay, as copper is oxidized at the anode, copper to plus ion are formed and enter the solution and this will cause the build up of positive charge in half cell. Okay, so this is what it meant by charge build up. Okay, it, sama juga untuk, untuk silver, silver plus ion leave solution to be reduced at the cathode. So here dalam, dalam, uh, dalam solution ni we have copper 2 plus and here also we have Ag plus. Okay, silver ions. So silver ion, dia akan undergo reduction. So reduction means it will accept the electron. Okay, the electron will be transferred from this electrode, from copper, okay, going through the wire and then passing the electrode and later on the, the silver ion will accept the electron. Okay, uh, so bila dia dah jadi, dia accept the electron and becoming silver atom, betul tak? So dia mak makin lama when this happen, this banyak Ag plus yang bertukar kepada silver. So what happen to this solution? So it become more, it become less positive, betul tak? Ag plus dah lompat, dia bukan dah has been converted into Ag atom. Okay, so what happened to this solution? It become less positive. Ataupun kata lain, it become more negative. Okay, become more negative. So that is what it meant by build up the negative charge in half cell. Okay, so the N ion, the NO3 minus, which come from the salt bridge, Neutral the excess positive charge from the anode and K plus neutral the excess negative charge from the cathode. So that is the purpose why we need to have the salt bridge. Okay, let me tell you again how this galvanic cell works. Okay. Tonight, get Okay, alright, so macam mana dia boleh harness the electro, electrical energy from chemical energy to electrical energy. Okay, so we have copper and we have silver as the electrode. So as we know, copper and silver, they have il, uh, uh, different in potential. Okay, different in uh, potential. Maksudnya dia punya potential, uh, dia punya energy, dia punya potential tu uh, berbeza. Okay. Uh, so copper in comparison to silver has higher tendency to oxidize. This is in comparison to silver. Kalau copper kita compare dengan zinc, zinc it has higher tendency to to oxidize compared to copper. So it depends on kita compare dengan siapa. Kita kita uh, apa nama tu kita ialah compare dengan siapa lah. Okay, alright. So copper has higher tendency to undergoes oxidation compared to silver. So when this, uh, bila kita connectkan the galvanic cell, maksudnya bila dah prepare the galvanic cell, automatically when they, bila they sense, okay, ada uh, potential different between these two electrodes, copper will undergoes oxidation. Automatically, they farm farm sendiri. Uh, that's why by nature, okay, then spontaneous tu kenapa? Sebab they follow the nature of the, uh, the, the electrode itself. Okay, so copper will undergoes oxidation. Bila uh, undergoes oxidation, so this copper atom which come from the electrode ni, okay, the moment dia ada uh, potential different, it will oxidize. That means dia akan lompat into the solution becoming copper 2 plus guys. Ha, ni macam dia tunjuk kat arrow ni kan. So from copper, okay, from the electrode and then converted into copper 2 plus. 
leaving behind the electron on the electrode. Eh, so copper akan lompat jadi copper 2 plus. Maksudnya bila dia jadi ion, dia akan masuk dalam solution lah. Ini dalam keadaan atom, dia solid. Okay, so leaving behind the electron on the electrode. That is why this electrode has a negative charge. And it is called anode, guys. Okay, it is called anode and it has negative charge. And this anode is where the oxidation takes place. Okay, copper jadi copper 2 plus. If we, if we were to write the equation for this half cell, it will be like this. Copper in solid state. Okay, remove the electron. So, kita tak buat tolak. It will be transferred to the other side. It become copper 2 plus equals plus 2 E. This is the oxidation reaction on this half cell. Okay, so this electron yang dia tinggalkan tadi will be moving through the wire. See, dia akan bergerak through the wire. Okay, and then lalu work meter ke kalau ada, kalau ada mentor ke what not. Okay, so dia akan lalu and then the electron, okay, dia akan pass the, the silver. Okay, so that's why solid is very important because they provide the surface for electron transfer. Okay, so the electron dia akan pergi ke turun ke sini the moment dia dia reaches the apa apa tu reaches ataupun touches the solution the Ag plus okay will undergo reduction. Dia akan accept the electron yang lalu dekat elektrod ni, okay, dia akan accept the electron and becoming Ag atom. Okay, so dia akan accept, dia akan uh, diterima oleh Ag plus and this Ag plus will become Ag atom ataupun silver atom and silver atom will be deposited on this electrode. Okay, alright, so in terms of equation, okay, so the Ag plus will accept equals the electron, so one electron. Alhamdulillah, becoming Ag solid. So it will get deposited on this electrode. Okay, so electron yang dah di, di donate come from the anode tu mesti ada orang yang terima that electron. So that is what we call redox. Okay, alright. So that is what happening. Uh, oxidation and reduction. So this is what we call cathode lah. Cathode is where the reduction takes place. Okay, after a while, mana tak lama pun benda ni dia jadi sekejap. Okay, okay sebab dia, dia cepat. Okay, so you can imagine eh, bila bila Uh, apa nama tu uh, apa copper leaving the electron on the electrode jadi copper 2 plus banyak yang lompat jadi copper 2 plus kan what happened to this half cell okay so banyak yang lompat jadi copper 2 plus okay so this half cell will become very positive so that very positive this is what we call charge build up so dia akan jadi ion entrance build up of the positive charge in half cell. So, dia jadi very positive. Same goes to this half cell. Sebab tadi, Ag plus, kan, kan dalam solution ni ada Ag plus. Ag plus accepts the electron from the electrode becoming Ag. So, now, uh, dia dah ada less Ag plus, less positive ion in the solution. So, bila less positive, which means more negative. So, this solution become very negative ataupun more negative lah. Ah, so this this is also what we call charge build up. So we don't want this to happen because kenapa? Kalau dia berlaku dekat sini, the electron tadi yang supposed to be, uh, I mean, to be moving atau flowing to the other side, kena pergi dekat sebelah sana because dia kata, oh, this side need electron more than this side. They, they, ni saya punya monolog dalaman lah eh. Okay, nak bagi awak faham. Okay, so elektron tu bergerak ke sama, ke ke arah silver because the sense 
uh, apa nama tu potential different. Okay, they sense potential different dekat situ. So, kalau 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 dekat sini dah ada potential different. Okay, so buat apa elektron tu kena pergi to this side. Baik dia remain dekat this half cell sebab dia kata eh sini pun dah jadi sangat positif ni. Daripada aku pergi sana, baik aku remain je dekat this half cell. Nak neutralisekan this uh, ions. This build up of positive ion. So kalau di elektron tu tak flow from anode to cathode, so mana ada electrical energy produce. Okay, ah, uh, so we don't want that to happen. We want the electron to flow from anode to cathode, anode to cathode, anode to cathode. So kalau ini berlaku charge build up, and then kita tak settlekan for this charge build up, the electron will not flow. Okay, alright. So in order to solve this problem, we add in K plus, uh, ataupun we add in potassium nitrate, ataupun the salt bridge. Okay, uh, so this salt bridge, the purpose is to neutralize the charge build up. So as you can see, this is very positive, kan? So the, the negative ion from the salt bridge will get into this half cell to neutralize because the negative charge, kan? And O3 minus will be moving into this half cell to neutralize the charge build up. Same goes to K plus. Sini, sini jadi tadi very negative kan. So the K plus will be moving into this solution, into this half cell to neutralize the negative charge build up. Faham tak? Bukannya copper tu plus ni pergi bergerak dekat salt bridge, pergi pula dekat this half cell. Bukan AG plus ni bergerak ke salt bridge, pergi to this cell. No. Okay, banyak student yang salah faham. Tak tahulah macam mana you belajar dulu tapi salah faham. Dia tahu galvanic cell, dia tahu to neutralize the charge build up, dia tahu tapi bila kita suruh cerita kan, dia kata because the ion bergerak uh, into the salt bridge. Bukan dia bergerak, ion daripada half cell tu bergerak ke dalam salt bridge pergi ke the other half cell eh. Bukan. Dia bergerak keluar, the ion of the salt bridge is moving out from the salt bridge into the half cell solution. The negative akan pergi dekat anode. The positive ion will be moving to the reduction punya half cell. Faham? Faham tak? Faham, Madam. Uh, Faham, Madam. Okay. Alright. So this is very important. Eh? Banyak student salah faham. Dia tahu the purpose of having salt bridge. Tapi somehow uh, bila kita tanya dia punya dia punya storyline ataupun dia punya kronologi tu, uh, dia salah faham. Dia kata the ions moving uh, allows the ion to move. Okay, from uh, copper to plus pergi ke ion sebelah ataupun the other way around. Okay, ataupun K tu masuk dekat, uh, K plus masuk dekat this side. Terbalik ion dia ataupun K and O3 duduk kat both side. <laughs> okay. Bukan, salah tu. Okay. Moving on, and then we have electrode. Okay, so commonly the anode is made of the metal. Okay, so electrode, we have anode and we have cathode. Okay. So anode is made of the metal that is oxidized and the cathode is made of the same metal as is produced by the reduction. Okay, uh, so dia... Uh, apa nama tu dia dia akan sama lah ion in the solution will be ion in the solution uh, will be the same as the metal used for the anode same goes to cathode atom yang diproduce in the reduction will be the same uh, will be used as the cathode okay uh, so kalau tadi copper 2 plus then the anode should be copper normally lah normally uh, and then kalau uh, hmm, Ketot, uh, sorry, uh, dia punya ion, uh, dia punya solution ataupun the product from the reduction is silver kan, silver atom. That means dia punya, dia punya electrode should be silver. Uh, yang paling senang lah nak, con nak construct the galvanic cell. However, if the redox reaction involve the oxidation or reduction of an ion to a different oxidation state, uh, okay, or oxidation or reduction of a gas in an electrode is used. 
Okay, uh, so not every time kita akan pakai, uh, okay, dia punya, uh, dia punya solution. Okay, sorry guys, kita stop sekejap. Okay, Azan. Okay, right. Tadi point number two ya. Yeah. Okay, however, if the redox reaction involve the oxidation or reduction of an ion to a different oxidation state, or oxidation or reduction of a gas in an electrode is used. Okay, alright. So, uh, apa kalau dia ada contohnya ion two plus, and then the the anode use is iron so the iron 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 solid eh? uh, so the iron is also uh, will be used to undergo oxidation to produce iron 2 plus so dia ada dua purpose dekat situ satu dia function sebagai electrode satu lagi dia function sebagai dia involve in the oxidation reaction uh, tapi ada case di mana uh, the the oxidation takes place tu macam ni iron Uh, 2 plus becoming maksudnya remove the electron okay becoming iron 3 plus uh, okay this is the oxidation maksudnya bila dia bagi uh, scenario lah uh, so as you can see jangan maksudnya in this case you tengok okay dia iron 2 plus 
bila dia jadi ion dia become aqueous okey uh, so dia ion 2 plus becoming ion 3 plus okey so for this case we are not going to use ion as the electrode kita tak pakai ion as the electrode for this case we are going to use inert electrode guys okey we are going to use inert electrode so inert electrode for example like platinum and what else ah uh, uh, graphite Okay, uh, so platinum is the most common one. So kita akan guna platinum as the electrode. We still need the electrode because electrode allow the electron transfer. Cuma masalah student adalah bila dia nampak ion, terus dia, bila dia ke draw, dia, you are required to draw the galvanic cell kan? Yang terlibat untuk oxidation adalah ion 2 plus dengan jadi ion 3 plus. Terus dia, 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 dia elektrod tu dia pakai ion. Okay. Terus dia pakai ion solid. Macam ni lah. Ni. Which is wrong. Tak boleh. Okay. Ha, so, kes ni dia lain. Dia, dia jadi sebagai elektrod sebab yang berlaku oxidationnya adalah ion tu sendiri. Ion. Okay. Solid. Becoming. Ion 2 plus. 2 electron. Okay. So, bila you check. Oh, oh, this one dia solid. So, dia boleh jadilah electrode. So, we can choose the ion as uh, the electrode. Uh, we can choose ion as the electrode. So, dia ada dua purpose dekat situ. Satu sebagai electrode. Satu lagi dia terlibat dalam reaction. Tapi case this one. Kita mana ada ion 2 plus sebagai electrode? Kita tak ada ion 2 plus sebagai elektrod. Ion sebagai elektrod. Okay, ion 2 plus kita tak ada sebagai elektrod. Okay, so in this case, the electrode that we we need to use, the electrode that will be used for the galvanic cell will be the inner elektrod. Will be the platinum. Okay, and uh, this one also. Nampak tak macam ni? Hmm. Tahu lah you nampak ke tak? Macam ni saya nak get rid of this one. Ah, okay. Dekat reduction ni kan? Dekat reduction. So yang, uh, okay, you you nampak tak? Dia MnO4 minus becoming Mn2 plus. Okay, becoming Mn2 plus. So student bila nampak Mn, terus je dia punya elektrod yang dia pakai nanti dia terus label. Mn solid. Kena label eh, solid uh, for the electrod eh. Terus jadi Mn solid. Sebab dia nampak manganis, oh manganis solid. No. Okay, sebab yang terlibat untuk reaction tu adalah dalam bentuk dalam keadaan aqueous. So, you tak bolehlah tiba-tiba terus jadikan mangani sebagai dia punya elektrod. That is wrong. Okay, uh, so dia hanya, uh, dia dia terlibat dalam reduction saja. But for the electrode, we need an inner electrode. This is satu case yang lain. Sebab kebetulan dia adalah solid. Dalam keadaan asal dia adalah solid, dia undergo oxidation. So, dia di, boleh digunakan sebagai elektrod juga. Okay? Ha, so, jangan bila nampak je, oh, mangan MnO4. Sedangkan ni ion kan? Terus dia jadikan dia sebagai elektrod. Okay? So, that is wrong. Okay, from the given diagram, since the half, re half reaction involve reducing the manganese oxidants, Manganese oxidation state from plus 7 to plus 2. Thus, we use an electrode that will provide a surface for the electron transfer without reacting with the MnO4 minus. So, we are going to be using the platinum. If you are using Mn, dia akan disturb the reduction punya reaction. So, that's why we cannot just simply, uh, oh, ni manganese terus pakai manganese. Okay, uh, so bukan begitu eh. Alai, eh? so inert electrode in this case platinum or uh, carbon or also known as graphite in solid state. You kena specify the state. Okay, dalam dalam this topic for topic four, okay, uh, the state is very important. You have to specify the state. Meaning that if you somehow miss out the state, there will be high tendency for you to lose mark. Okay. Ha, so kan, kan saya ada beritahu ada topik-topik yang kita insist state dia. Ada topik yang kita tak insist. Okay. So one of the topic yang insist will be this topic for electrochemistry. Okay. Uh, okay. So why do we use, why do we choose platinum as our inner electrode? Because 
it works well because it is extremely non-reactive and it can conduct electricity. Okay, inert means it will not interfere with the reaction that uh, occurring in the half cell. Okay. Uh, okay, so we are done with the galvanic cell and how it works. Okay, so moving on to IUPAC cell notation of galvanic cell. Okay, make sure that you know how to sketch the galvanic cell correctly. Okay, so everything need to be in the, in the, in the, in the diagram. Okay, don't forget the electron flow, eh? Electron flow. The electron will flow, ah, ni, arrow dia ni, from the anode to the cathode. So, normally, kita akan place the anode on the left-hand side. Normally. Okay, tapi kalau you letak sebelah kan, belah kanan pun, Uh, uh, dia still akan from oxidation to reduction. Okay, tapi untuk senang nak ingat, kita memang letak sebelah kiri. Because one thing, kita nak tally kan, kita nak dia align with the cell notation later on. Okay. But this is spontaneous kan. So either way pun you letak, dia still akan from oxidation to reduction. Okay, and the electron will be moving from The oxidation half cell to the reduction half cell. Okay, so IUPAC cell notation of galvanic cell. Galvanic cell is a shorthand description of a voltaic cell. Okay, shorthand description of a voltaic cell. Meaning that if we have this cell notation, we will be able to imagine how the galvanic cell looks like. This is the shorthand, maksud shortcut lah maksudnya. Bila kita ada this cell notation, kita terus boleh imagine. Okay, siapa dia punya elektrod? Siapa yang undergoes oxidation? Siapa yang undergoes reduction? And then we have the salt bridge. Um, um, ah, yeah. Okay, and then the oxidation is from uh, what to what? And then from, uh, uh, and then reduction from what to what? Ah, that's why nama dia shorthand description. Okay, uh, so you either have this cell notation or you're going to draw the, 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 the galvanic cell. Okay, uh, kalau tak draw, at least kita ada cell notation, kita terus dah dapat the idea of how the, uh, the cell looks like. Okay, so oxidation, so this is the syarat. Okay, ini dia punya rules and guideline, you tak boleh ubah apa-apa because this is based on IUPAC. Okay, so the electrode, we need to have electrode and then you have the line, satu line sahaja, okay, that shows uh, the different in phase. Okay, uh, phase vary lah dekat situ, satu line. And then we have the electrolyte, okay, the solution. And then we have this double line that represent the, 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 the salt bridge. Dia ada tulis kat bawah ni lah, tapi saya... Saya cerita dulu, since kita, ni point nombor dua kan. Uh, we have this double line to present the salt bridge. Maybe you boleh label macam ni. Salt bridge. Uh, okay. And then the electrolyte. And then phase barrier. Phase barrier maksudnya kalau dia different phase, you will be using this one. Okay. That's why you need to have the state. Kalau you tak ada state, macam mana you nak tahu dia face barrier dia apa? Kalau berbeza face barrier, we are going to use this single line. Kalau it has the same face, you are going to be using the comma. Ini wow. Okay, tak boleh padam. Okay, wow. Comma and then electrode for the reduction. So, this right here is for the oxidation untuk on the left. Yang left ni, oxidation. Okay, uh, yang on the right hand side is for the reduction. Okay, uh, so dia macam mimic the galvanic cell sebenarnya, tapi dalam bentuk notation. Okay, alright, so like I said just now, single line re represent the phase barrier. Maksudnya kalau dia, for example, solid dengan, um, I mean, uh, uh, solid, okay, dia reduce kan, uh, so Bukan dia oxidize. Contohnya dia oxidize uh, copper just now. Copper oxidize into copper 2 plus. Copper is solid, betul tak? And then oxidize into copper 2 plus. Haa, see? Okay, so dia berbeza state dekat situ. So we are going to be using the single line. Kita akan pakai single line dekat sini.
Okay, so if multiple electrolyte in same phase, a comma is used rather than the single line. Uh, often use, uh, so normally kalau kita ada, kita pakai comma, kalau ataupun kita pakai, uh, maksudnya we have same phase, we are going to be using the inert electrode. Okay, we are going to be using the inert electrode. So this is basically the, the cell notation lah. We will look at uh, the example later on, okay, how to, to, to make use of this cell notation. Kita akan tengok eh. Okay, buat macam blur lagi kan. Okay, tak apa, kita kena ada contoh lah. Contoh pun nampak. Okay. This is how it is. Okay, alright. So, um, we have to have the electrode. Okay, kebetulan electrode dia tu uh, um, terlibat juga dengan oxidation. So, the same atom is involved in the in the oxidation. So, zinc, okay, cerita dia kan dekat sebelah sini mesti oxidation kan guys. Should be oxidation, this side should be reduction. Okay, so zinc will oxidize into zinc 2 plus. See? And at the same time, the zinc behave as an electrode on the oxidation half cell. Okay, so this is the anode. Bukan N. Bukan anode, anode dia ni eh, zinc sebenarnya. Anode dia zinc. The anode part ataupun the oxidation part saya rasa yang lebih sesuai adalah oxidation part this is the reduction ok, uh, tapi kalau anode you tanya yang mana, zinc sebenarnya, zinc is the anode, yes the terminal, so I think it's better to use oxidation and reduction rather than anode and cathode, but mungkin nak dia, dia ada style, style untuk ingat kot, A, B, C A, B, C, anode first The, the anode side lah, anode side lah. Mungkin boleh anode side and then cathode side. Okay. Okay, so zinc becoming zinc, zinc will oxidize becoming zinc 2 plus, leaving the electron on the electrode. Okay, uh, so nampak tak? This is solid, this is aqueous. So they are different in terms of phase. So that's why you need to have this single line. You guys too. And then don't forget the salt bridge. Okay, remember the electron tadi kan tertinggalkan. So the electron later on will be accepted by copper 2 plus. Betul tak? Copper 2 plus. And then copper 2 plus will be reduced into copper. See? It will be reduced into copper. And then kebetulan pula the copper is also the cathode ataupun the electrode used in the half cell. Kebetulan. Okay? Alright, maksudnya dia boleh digunakan sebagai elektrod. So, as you can see, they are different in terms of phase. So, we are going to be using the single line. Okay, alright. So, from this cell notation, kita boleh imagine the galvanic cell. Betul tak? And then, kalau you kena suruh buat equation, you boleh buat daripada equation from the cell notation. Okay, sebab so, you dah ada this. Okay, this is oxidation part. This is reduction part. So, if you were to to write the oxidation equation, how do you write it? Zinc in solid state okay, will be oxidized to form zinc 2 plus. Okay, aqueous plus 2E electron. See? Settle. How about reduction? If you were to transform into equation. Okay, so the copper 2 plus will accept the Electron from the oxidation just now, it will accept the electron. See, you can accept the electron becoming copper solid. Okay, and then from here pun, kalau you nak kena lukis lah, kata kalau you kena draw the the galvanic cell, for example, eh, you kena draw the galvanic cell, you tak ada masalah lah. So, first, buat dulu dia punya beaker dia tu. Okay, and then you have to have the electrode. Okay, make sure you draw ni solution ni. Kadang-kadang student lupa nak draw the solution eh. Kena buat lah macam ala-ala uh, ada air dalam tu kan. Ada solution. And you have wire. Okay, nak buat voltmeter ke apa tak apa. As long as you have wire, tak nak buat pun tak apa. And then you have the salt bridge. Okay, label. ha. So now is the time for you to label. So this is the anode. So anode use in this one is apa zinc so you label lah zinc sebab this one sepatutnya electrode 
Okay, all right, so zinc is used so solid. Okay, and then here we have cathode. So cathode kita apa? Copper, sebab kat sini sepatutnya again electrode. Okay, all right, so this is copper, solid. Okay, and then label this one. E, solution ni apa? Okay, dia tak beritahu apa kan? So maybe you can zinc 2 plus aqueous. Ataupun you nak letak zinc sulfate ke apa kan? Zinc nitrate ke? So okay. Okay, uh, so this one you boleh letak copper 2 plus in aqueous state. Okay, and then label the salt bridge. This one maybe you nak letak KNO3. Plus, dah siap. Make sure that they are all well connected. Okay, dah siap. From the cell notation. Okay, we get a lot of information from the cell notation itself. Okay. Alright, ada tak contoh yang kita kena guna koma? Ah? Ada ada, ni. Okay, alright. See, contoh eh, example, for the reaction below, uh, so this is the equation given to us. From this equation, you have to sketch and then you have to label the voltaic cell or the galvanic cell, which one half cell has AG as AG solid immersed in one more lah. Okay, so it's given to you already, the concentration and the, 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 the electrode lah. This is in a way, dia nak kata uh, the electrode use for one of the half cell. Immerse in one mole apa ni? Uh, AG and O3 and the other half cell has a platinum electrode immersed in one mole chromium nitrate. This is not supposed to be given. Ini tak perlu nak beritahu dekat you. Okay, kalau soalan exam lah. Okay, uh, this is guided question. Uh, so, kalau sebenarnya, kalau dia tak beritahu, you kena tahu that you should be using platinum, not chromium solid. Because why yang terlibat, okay, you identify lah siapa yang undergoes reduction, siapa undergoes oxidation. From this reaction, you can identify siapa undergoes oxidation, siapa undergoes reduction. Kenapa you can identify? Because you want to know who will become the cathode, who will become, who will stay in the oxidation half cell, okay, and who will be, become the anode, uh, cathode or anode ataupun reduction punya part. Okay. Uh, so that is very important. You boleh tahu daripada equation. So, so chromium 2 plus becoming chromium 3 plus. This is oxidation. AG plus becoming AG. This is reduction. Okay. Alright. So nampak tak? Chrom yang terlibat dalam reaction tu yang oxidize adalah chromium 2 plus kepada chromium 3 plus which is aqueous kepada aqueous. We don't have solid in here. So, janganlah guna chromium sebagai dia punya elektrod. Oh, faham tak apa yang saya nak cakapkan? Ha, okay. Masalah yang student selalu buat adalah bila dia nampak chromium. Oh, chromium. So, chromium solid lah sebagai elektrod. No, salah eh. Unless dia memang terlibat dalam oxidation tu. Okay. So, this is aqueous. So, this is also aqueous. Initially, it is aqueous state. And then after they become aqueous state. So, you don't have solid involved there, kan? So, kalau tak ada solid, that means you have to use inert electrode. Faham? So, kalau this one, nampak AG plus in aqueous state. And then they reduce becoming AG solid. So, this solid can also become the electrode. Faham tak? Dia boleh jadi elektrod sebab dia dalam keadaan solid. But this one tak ada solid pun for for oxidation. So that's why we need to use inert elektrod. Okay, and then you can sketch and then label and then you have to write the two half equation and cell notation. Okay, jawab dulu satu-satu. So this is how you punya galvanic cell should looks like. Okay, so and not if you are if you were asked uh, uh, the the electrode name the electrode that need to be used for the anode and cathode okay since you the identify tadi cr2 plus becoming cr3 plus so you should be using platinum bukan chromium okay platinum solid tambah dekat situ kena ada solid eh so you should not be using chromium guys okay uh, so this is also applicable for other example as well yang kalau yang jenis macam ni this one, AG plus as a solution and then cathode is the AG so solid. Okay, alright. So, oxidation punya reaction. This one, chromium oxidized into chromium 3 plus. AG plus reduced into AG solid. Okay, macam mana nak, nak, nak buat dia punya cell notation guys. 
Okay, ha, ni macam biasalah sort of bridge kena ada ikut, uh, dia punya electron flow. Okay, the electron will flow. Jangan lupa, slide. common mistake juga student selalu lupa nak buat electron flow. Okay, from the oxidation to, from anode to cathode. From PT to AG. Okay, alright. Um, and then uh, this is a cell notation. This is how it should look like for your cell notation. Okay, ikut cell notation yang IUPAC dah bagi tadi, kena start from the electrode. Okay, turn out electrode kita adalah inert electrode. So, kita pakai. Mesti inert, I mean mesti electrode lah. Okay, so since uh, dekat sini inert electrode and then sini kita pakai single, single line. Okay, baru kita start dengan uh, ion yang involved in the oxidation. Okay, in the oxidation. Sebab ini inert electrode tak terlibat, this just sebagai electrode. So, CR2 plus in aqueous state will be oxidized into CR3+, which is also in aqueous state. So as you can see, these two have the same state. Therefore, you are going to be using the comma. Okay, you, you, you should be using comma instead of uh, rather than the, the single line. Single lines are lah. Single line untuk different in phase. Uh, so baru you pakai single line. Okay, so these two have the same phase. Uh, then you have the, uh, what do you call this, uh, salt bridge, okay, and then yeah, electron just now will be accepted by AG+, plus, okay, in aqueous and will be reduced into AG solid. Turn out the AG solid, the AG solid is also behave as an electrode. This is also the electrode, okay. Uh, so, macam itulah dia punya cell notation dia tu. You kena aware because this is very, very important. If you miss out any of the comma, any of the state, that means the mark will be deducted. Okay, maximum mark for this one will be two marks. So, kalau salah satu missing, is either you got two or zero ataupun one or zero. Itu pun kita ada kita pembahagian markah dia lah. Phase is very important, kena include electrode, kena include and then dia punya single line, double line, comma tu that is also uh, apa nama important, kalau salah, salah. Okay, sebab this is the rule set by the IUPAC. You tak boleh simply uh, tukarlah pakai ni, tak boleh. Okay. Another example, sketch the galvanic cell diagram from the following reaction. <sighs> Write the cell notation. Okay. Uh, lagi satu, gas. Kalau it evolve gas, guys. Uh, pun kita kena pakai inert electrode. Okay, bukan saja ions. Ion macam CR2 plus dengan CR3 plus, equus equus just now kan. Uh, how about gas? For gas also, we are going to be using inert electrode. Okay, contohnya hidrogen kelakar eh. Ni nak share lah eh, jawapan student eh. H2, maksudnya dekat reduction, uh, dia involve hydrogen gas. So, bila student buat elektron, okay, dia so dia nampak H2, so dia pun label H2 elektron. Mana elektron kena solid? Betul tak? Mana ada hidrogen dalam bentuk solid? Okay, itu yang kelakar ni tu. Hydrogen solid. Elektrod sebagai ketot. Ah, gitu macam itu. Okay, so please. Jangan buat silly mistake yang macam ni. Okay, uh, elektrod need to be solid. So obviously hydrogen mana ada solid. Kalau chromium tu mungkin lah kita, kita uh, chromium ada solid. Uh, kan? So dia pun letak chromium. Uh, tapi tak terlibat pun. Uh, tapi still salah kan. But this one H2 mana ada solid. You jadikan dia solid. Suka hati je. Okay. Um. Okay. Sketch the government itself. Right? Write the cell notation. Okay. So example. Another example. Okay. Macam biasa. You kena identify which will undergo oxidation and reduction. Sebab apa you nak identify. You nak draw the governing cell kan. You, you nak kena tahu. This half cell oxidation. Okay. Dia involve siapa. Okay, oxidation involve H2 uh, and then reduction involve copper. Okay, uh, so you dah tahu, so you boleh tahulah nanti you nak kena pakai apa for your electrode. Uh, 
okay. So these are the uh, upper reaction equation takes place, the car oxidation and reduction. So you, you should be drawing, this is how you should be drawing your, your yeah. Okay, one thing, bila dia involve gas, ah, dia special sikit lah, sebab you kena contain the gas kan, you kena contain the gas. Uh, so, um, since dia sebagai anode, so the the H2 will be flow into this one. You kena macam ada test tube sikit, ada 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 inlet dekat situ, uh, nak flow in the hydrogen. So, kena ada benda ni. Kalau you tak ada benda ni pun, Tak ada macam telangkup apa nama tu uh, test tube tu pun tolak markah. Okay, uh, ber bertebaran lah hidrogen awak tu. So kena ada that like macam this this form of uh, glassware to contain the hydrogen. Okay, and this hydrogen will be oxidized into H plus. So this electrode is the platinum. Whatever happen, you need to have the electrode. Okay, uh, ini. Platinum, bukan H2. Ha. Okay, and then this one is copper. Copper electrode sebab dia oxidize jadi copper and at the same time it also become the electrode. Okay, right. So cell notation. So uh, this is the half cell equation. This is the redox equation where you combine both equation. Okay, cancel out the the electrons, electrons tu cancel out. Kalau tak sama, kena bagi sama dulu. So, you kena multiply with a factor and what not. Uh, settlekan benda tu. Uh, so, this is the cell notation. Okay. Uh, oxidation part, reduction part. See? Nampak tak? Gas dengan aqueous dekat situ. So, different in phase barrier. Betul tak? So, you akan pakai single line. Bukan pakai comma eh. Uh, kalau sama baru same phase, baru you pakai comma. Ini tak perlu. Perlu tak saya letak, Madam, perlu tak saya letak dua, uh, dia punya coefficient tu, tak perlu. No need. Okay. Uh, kalau terletak, tak apa. Tapi just nak beritahu, it's not insist to add in the coefficient from the redox equation into the cell notation. Tak perlu. Yang perlu adalah dia punya species-species yang involve in the oxidation and reduction. Okay. Right. Checkpoint 3. Apa? Ah, cuba buat. Alah, senang ni. Cuba. Warm up sikit tangan tu. Lukis. Sketch the voltage cell. And then write the cell notation. Okay, go ahead and try first.
Yes, I may do. Are you question good? Okay, dah. Dah siap ke? Dah medium. Dah medium. Dah medium. Dah medium. Alright. Okay, good. Try eh. Cuba. Cuba. Jangan tak cuba. Okay, ni, 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 ni level dia lagi senang daripada example-example that we have earlier. That we had earlier. Okay. Kena identify, okay, as always, you have to identify which of these species undergo oxidation and reduction. So, zinc becoming zinc 2 plus. So, zinc will undergo oxidation. So, boleh terus oxidation, that means zinc, since this is solid. Dia kebetulan, dia, dia solid. Dia yang terlibat dalam oxidation tu pun dia solid. So, it can become the electrode as well. Okay, copper 2 plus undergo reduction because... Initially, it is 2 plus, now becoming copper. Zero lah. Okay, so aqueous becoming solid. So, ada solid yang terlibat. So, therefore, dia boleh jadi elektrod juga. Okay, alright. So, uh, dia tanya soalan apa ni? Sketch the voltage cell, then write the cell notation. Okay, write the cell notation. So, this is the oxidation part. The reduction kita asingkan. This is the redox reaction. The overall equation lah. Okay, alright. And then this is how your galvanic cell kena looks like. Okay, alright. So you ada anode, zinc and then lagi sekali saya nak highlightkan make sure that you label that it is in solid state. Zinc, solid. Copper, solid. Also, okay. Alright, so you can add a wire and show the electron flow from the anode to the cathode from zinc to cathode of copper. Okay, and then the, the solution you have to label as zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus. And then the salt bridge, uh, overall balance equation. Okay, uh, and this is the cell notation. So, Alan tanya cell notation, right? Uh, so, zinc, solid, and then one sing single line, zinc 2 plus aqueous. Okay, so this is the electrode and at the same time, it also oxidizes into zinc 2 plus. Okay, so it releases the electron and becoming zinc 2 plus. And the electron will be accepted by copper 2 plus in the solution. And the copper 2 plus will, ox will reduce, will be reduced into copper solid, which also turn out to be the electrode. Okay, and this between aqueous and solid, kita kena pakai single line. Sebab differ in phase area. Okay, alright. Okay, okay, moving on guys. Moving on to standard electrode potential and cell potential. 4.3. Kita dah nak about to start our journey for calculation. Mesti ada calculation kan? Ha, ni nak nak masuk lah situ. Situ tadi just more on the concept. Okay, alright. So 4.3 standard electrode potential and cell potential. So these are the, the 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 learning objective that you should know and that you should be uh, apa, having once you have covered this subtopic. So ada banyak sikit, ada extra sikit itu. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima. So there are five of learning objective. There are five learning objective that you should know. Okay. Alright. The word standard there, ada standard. Maksudnya you kena imagine lah. Standard must be normally we have a standard condition. Okay, uh, for the measurement and what not. So, we standard selalunya represent the standard condition where the reaction takes place. Okay, uh, so that's the idea of it. Standard electrode potential. Okay, so the analogy of electrode potential based on water tank experiment. So, saya dah mention about this different and elect different in electrode potential kan. So, by nature memang akan ada uh, yang ada high potential energy, ada low potential energy. Macam kita lah, macam awak dengan kawan awak. Ada awak suka um, chemistry. Kawan awak tak suka chemistry. Uh, so that that part, maksudnya kita consider you yourself have high potential in chemistry. Kawan awak tak ada, maksudnya ber, ada low potential in chemistry. Same goes to electrode potential, copper dengan zinc. Zinc has higher electrode potential compared to uh, copper. Uh, copper dengan silver. Uh, copper by nature dia memang ada, dia ada different in potential lah senang cerita. 
Okay, uh, so you are the uh, water tank dekat sini kan. When the cells are connected, so when you have uh, the two cells connected, electron flow from the electrode with more negative charge, greater potential energy to the electrode with more positive charge, less potential energy. So that is how it works. Macam kalau sungai gitu kan, air terjun tu dia akan jatuh daripada tempat tinggi ke tempat rendah. Okay, so that is the equilibrium of, uh, I mean the, the Uh, macam mana life work lah macam dia daripada yang kaya ke miskin kaya kena sedekah ke miskin so to to balance it out tu tak to balance it out uh, so sama juga dengan kita punya chemistry pun okay so water flow from the tank with higher level to the tank with a lower level until it reaches the 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 balance is there okay so the different in potential energy between the anode and the cathode in a galvanic cell is called the cell potential Okay, don't get confused. We have electrode potential and cell potential. Electrode potential maksudnya we are focusing on the copper, copper je. Uh, zinc, zinc je kan. Uh, so that is electrode potential. But when we combine these two and form a cell, okay, this difference in potential is what we call cell potential. So dia, dia jadi cell kan, dia jadi galvanic cell. So the different in both electrode ni punya potential Okay, kita boleh measure and it, it is called cell potential. Okay, so kita boleh play around dengan elektrod kan. Nak pakai zinc and copper or silver and copper or maybe uh, what else lah? Asyik-asyik itu je. Uh, magnesium and zinc. Okay. So example of how electrical current flow in a galvanic cell, okay, consider the spontaneous redox reaction. So zinc becoming a uh, zinc solid plus copper to plus in aqueous state becoming zinc to plus aqueous plus copper state. Okay, so zinc metal is being oxidized and copper to plus being reduced. This is a redox reaction. Okay, uh, so by nature zinc and copper have different in potential. So electron are transferred from the zinc to the copper. So like what we have here, so zinc strip is deep into copper sulfate solution. So dia akan automatically sense the different in potential. So zinc will undergo oxidation and copper undergoes reduction. So zinc akan lompat masuk dekat dalam dalam solution and becoming zinc 2 plus okay leaving behind the electron so the electron will be accepted by the copper 2 plus and copper 2 plus accept the electron and becoming copper sulfate as you can see the intensity of the color of the solution nampak tak initially dia biru now dia jadi less blue nampak sebab apa yang menyebabkan dia biru is because of the presence of copper 2 plus since copper 2 plus has been reduced to copper atom So less copper 2 plus in the solution. So less copper 2 plus that means less intensity of the blue color. Okay. Uh, so tu yang you nampak dekat sini tu. Deposited the copper has been deposited on the, uh, the, the, the zinc strip ni. Tapi bila masalah macam ni kita tak boleh nak asingkan the current tu. Sebab it happened in the in the same container. Okay. That's why kita separate kan dia so that we can harness the 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 electrical current. Ha, kalau macam ni dia berlaku redox tapi kita tak boleh nak 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 collect nak nak collect the electric the, the 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 apa electrical energy tu. Okay. So this reaction have the potential to generate electrical current. When two electrode connected in a galvanic cell, the potential different between this electrode is a driving force that pushes electron from anode to Okay, the potential different guys is because of the potential different it somehow become the driving force that pushes electron from anode to cathode okay uh, driving force so kalau you suka chemistry you mesti ada that driving force to 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 make sure that you got a for chemistry ah contoh lah okay contoh Moving on to standard electron potential still. So electrode in each half cell is having its own individual potential called the standard electrode potential. 
Okay, so the electro potential of half cell defend, defend, depends on several factors. Okay, it depends on the nature of the electrode, the temperature, pressure, concentration of ions in the electrolyte. Okay, so these all may affect, may have, fact, uh, may have effect on the electrode potential. Okay, so the standard condition for measuring electrode potential of half cell. So in order to measure the electrode potential, maksudnya nak, kita nak value lah, kita nak, nak something that is uh, quantitative. Okay, kita nak measure the value. So the, the, the measurement need to be fixed at the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is considered as standard condition lah. Okay, the pressure should be at 1 atm and the concentration should be at 1 molar. Okay, uh, so kalau if all of these are, apa nama, uh, apa nama tu, cap constant, that means kita consider that the, the condition is at standard. Okay. Okay, so that is in terms of electrode potential. Okay, guys. Okay, now potential difference is also referred as electromotive force emf or cell potential maksudnya you dah ada dua dua electrode dekat situ uh, so bila you ada dua electrode dekat situ you are actually measuring for emf ataupun the cell potential okay yang atas ni is focusing on the electrode punya satu electrode punya potential okay uh, so this one the si unit should be in volt lah we are going to be using the unit of V. Okay, however, the limitation only measures the overall cell potential, not half cell electrode potential. Maksudnya, so far, as of now, we we only have the apa nama tu, method to measure the cell potential. Kita tak ada method nak measure the electrode potential. The half cell electrode potential. Ah, uh, We don't have this, this uh, as of now lah, setakat yang ni lah. Tak tahulah sekarang ni dah ada kan. Okay. Yang kita boleh measure adalah cell potential. Bila dah ada dua elektrod dalam satu sel, satu sel. Baru kita boleh measure. But the one is, that that one is called E cell. Okay, ataupun E not cell. Uh, so, so how do we, I mean, solve this problem? Okay, so to measure half cell electrode potential, one electrode in the cell is assigned as zero potential and the other electrode potential is measured relative to the zero potential electrode. Okay, so kita terpaksa buat macam ni. Maksudnya kita kena assign, uh, kita hanya boleh ukur the electrode, the different in electrode potential. Maksudnya bila ada dua electrode connected in a cell. Okay, uh, so that's the problem. Kita tak ada lagi so far device ataupun measurement untuk nak measure. Okay, zinc punya electrode potential berapa? Ah, uh, cucuk. Cuba measure dia punya electrode potential. Uh, we don't have that, that I mean, facilities yet. Ataupun kita tak ada that kemudahan lagi. Setakat yang ni lah, okay. Uh, so, macam mana kita nak measure the electrode potential tu? Boleh, tapi kita kena uh, assign satu one of the electrode should be assigned as zero potential. Okay, and then the, the other electrode potential too is measured based on ataupun relative in comparison to that zero potential electrode. So, siapakah yang di-assign sebagai zero potential electrode too? It is called she standard hydrogen electrode. Okay, so this standard hydrogen electrode potential, kita assign dia punya E0 dia ataupun E0 uh, reduction dia sebagai zero, value dia zero. So, bila dia ni kita dah fixkan zero, kita boleh measure lah the electrode potential of other metal. For example, we can measure the zinc, we can measure the copper, silver, potassium and what not. Okay, uh, tapi this is with respect to standard hydrogen electrode. Okay, uh, so far dia dah fix kepada she ni sebagai dia punya standard electrode. Uh, so, the absolute tendency of a half reaction cannot be measured directly. Like I mentioned to you just now, it can only be measured relative to another half reaction. So, the standard hydrogen electrode she, also known as reference electron, is used to measure half reaction. So we're going to be, be using this uh, she electrode lah. 
So the voltage between this electrode and its solution has been assigned the potential of exactly zero. Okay, kita terus dia assign dia sebagai zero. So she, nama dia apa? Standard hydrogen electrode. Is reduction of H plus to H2. So this is the half cell of she lah. H, reduction of H plus to H2. Dia reduce eh. Under standard condition. So these are the, the uh, apa, criteria that you need to follow. Okay, uh, keadaan of she tu. Maksudnya dia punya solution should be one molar of acid solution because they supply the H, H plus. It's either HCl ataupun H2SO4. Okay, and then the pressure of the hydrogen gas should be 180 m. And this should be conducted at standard temperature and pressure. Okay, uh, nama pun standard hydrogen electrode kan. Uh, so, so this is the reduction reaction of C. H plus, okay, so dia akan jadi H2, betul tak? Jadi gas, so H2, so you H plus tu, you kena balance out lah. Okay, uh, so that's why kita letak 2 H plus dekat depan, tambah 2 E, balance kan, dapat H2. Kita tahu dia daripada H plus jadi H2. Okay, uh, so dia reduce, dia akan jadi H2. Mana jadi H pula? Mana ada H atom? Dia ada H2 gas saja kan, molecule. So, you balance kan, that's why you letak 2 dekat depan. Sebab you dah tahu H2 as your final product. So, this is how it looks like, guys. Bila you nak kena draw she, katakanlah, nak kena draw uh, uh, standard hydrogen electrode. So, this is how you should be drawing it. Macam biasa, when it involves gas, you kena pakai this like, macam uh, apa nama tu, test tube ni. You kena ada inlet and outlet. Okay, kena ada inlet and outlet dekat situ. Alright, okay, so you are the H plus and then ni outlet dia akan keluar lah H2 sebab H2 as the product. Okay, alright. Macam ni lah cara kita nak measure. Okay, zinc punya electric potential berapa? 0.76. This is with respect to C. Sebab kita tak ada so far facility untuk nak measure directly the electric potential of zinc. Tak ada. Tapi kita boleh buat macam ni. Sebab kita dah assign this one as Z0. So bila D0 yang kita dapat value tu adalah the value, kita boleh assign the value for Z. Okay. Uh, so this is how we are, uh, the, 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 the apa nama tu experiment has been conducted in order to to measure the electric potential with respect to she. Okay. For the uh, apa nama tu electric use. Standard reduction potential Okay SRP Rasanya during your apa Secondary school Ataupun during your SPM time You also have been introduced to this Yang mana you kena hafal apa Kalau tak tahu zaman saya Kalau nak kahwin kena ada Apa tah benda-benda yang list tu kan ha, Itu list pendek Okay dia dah macam Uh, take out the uh, apa elect, uh, apa nama tu species that uh, commonly asked for example okay tapi sebenarnya we have a lot more kita ada list berbuka-buka surat banyak okay sebenarnya okay so what is standard reduction potential reduction potential okay reduction potential so the potential is measured in terms of reduction Nama dia reduction kat sini ada sebab ya. So the potential is measured in terms of the ability to undergo reduction. Standard as always, okay, this reaction need to be performed at standard condition. Okay, right. so let's look at the statement that we have here just now. Like macam kita boleh baca from the tajuk of the ni sendiri kan. Tapi let's look at the ni. Okay, standard reduction potential SRP compare the tendency for particular reduction half reaction to occur relative to the reduction of H plus to H2 under standard condition. Okay, uh, so for a particular, the tendency to undergo reduction guys. Okay, so macam mana kita nak identify? As you can, as you know, as we know, we have a lot of species. Kita ada banyak sangat species ion kita kan. Macam mana kita nak identify? 
kan nanti kita ada kita ada this reading kan uh, kita ada for K, potassium, zinc, magnesium, silver, copper, bla 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 We have, we have apa, apa nama ni? Reading lah ataupun the value for the reduction potential. Okay, uh, for the reduction potential. So, how do we decide which of these species prefers oxidation? Ataupun which of these species prefers oxidation? Okay, okay, and then one more thing guys, this is measured in terms of standard reduction potential, okay, yang value ni adalah based on standard reduction potential, kebolehan untuk reduce, okay, alright, macam ni, dia punya cara, half reaction with stronger tendency towards reduction, then the she, the value should be, the value of E not reduction should be positive value. The more positive the value, the higher tendency it is to be reduced. Ah, ni, this is very important eh. Lagi satu, half reaction with a stronger tendency towards oxidation, then the she have a negative value of E0 reduction. Okay, alright. So you boleh imagine kalau zinc dengan copper tadi, you boleh imagine value of zinc dia lebih negative Value dia lebih negatif daripada copper. More negative than the copper. So, this is katakanlah positif saya kata. Sebab nak cakap zinc is more negative than the uh, copper punya value. Okay, from the value tu. Ni kita akan tengok. Ah, ni ni. Nanti kat sini. Okay. For an oxidation half reaction. Okay, we can just simply uh, determine the E0. As you can see. The value is given in terms of E0 reduction. Sebab eksperimen tu dibuat dalam bentuk, dalam, I mean, di measure in terms of E0 reduction. But what if we want to know in terms of oxidation? Simple saja, E0 oxidation is also equal to negative of E0 reduction. So E0 reduction, we have it already, right? Kita dah ada this value. So nak tahu oxidation, what we need to do is, kita negatifkan the E0 reduction yang kita ada value tu. So kita dapatlah E0 oxidation. Okay? Alright. Ya, uh, inilah dia list yang kita ada ada dua ha si. Ya, yeah, ada dua 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 page dekat sini. Uh, so this these are the SRP uh, the list of standard electrode potential in echo solution at 25 degrees Celsius. So we have everything. So as you can see kenapa nama dia standard reduction potential? Nampak tak semua all of them are accepting electron. Nampak tak? So that's why list ni dalam bentuk reduction bukan dalam bentuk oxidation. Tapi kalau kita nak tahu oxidation tak susah pun kita kena just negatifkan dia E not reduction. Okay, cuma just nak highlight. That's why nama dia SRP because list dia ni, equation dia ni are all given in terms of reduction. Okay, this is again with respect to she. Sebab kita measure menggunakan she tadi yang hydrogen just now. So you nampak uh, value dia, dia, dia decreasing kan. Tapi the, the higher up ni, the negative the value. The value is become, the value is very negative. Maksudnya apa? Apa indication yang dalam kepala otak kita? Dia ni yang lagi negatif the value, the higher it is, dia lebih prefer to undergo oxidation. Okay, so that's the idea of it. The, the negative the value, the more negative the value is, the higher tendency for it is to undergo oxidation. Maksudnya dia prefer oxidation rather than reduction. Okay, ha, so macam ni, negatif 3.04. Sebenarnya dia dia tak suka nak undergo reduction. Dia suka lithium kan? Lithium suka jadi lithium plus, betul tak? Lithium tak suka jadi lithium. Lithium prefers to be in, uh, to to become lithium plus rather than lithium. So lithium prefers to undergo oxidation sebenarnya. And it is proven from the value of the standard potential. It is very, very negatif. So it shows that lithium and normally lah untuk yang lain-lain ni pun dia suka, dia prefers oxidation. 
Okay, and they're decreasing. Now, the, the, the value become more positive. See, uh, they become more positive. Maksudnya apa? Lagi positive the value, lagi prefer it is to undergo reduction. Okay, lagi prefer to undergo reduction. So, SRP table is used throughout this chapter. Uh, so, you akan memang akan pakai, you akan based on this table. Okay. First, uh, satu, you boleh compare strength of oxidizing and reducing agent. Okay, you, you need to calculate the cell potential for you will be using this table. Uh, whether it is standard or non-standard, uh, apa nama condition. And then spontaneity of redox reaction and, and etc. Okay. One last thing, go over sana ni. Ayu, tepat lima setengah. Okay, kita ada sepuluh minit lagi and then kita proceed with our uh, test. Kita nak discuss the the answer kan. Okay, alright. So, we're going to be referring to the SRP table just now. Okay, now in terms of strength of oxidizing and reducing agent. Nah, ni student banyak yang terpening, terconfused. Okay, alright. Kita again, we will be based on the SRP, SRP table just now. Okay, so based on SRP, the half equation are written as reduction rather than as oxidation. Okay, uh, so all of the reaction are written based on reduction, not based on oxidation. So when you compare the species punya value, okay, so as what we have earlier, so the more positive the E not reduction, punya value, lagi positive the E not reduction punya value. So for your information, these are all E reduction, E not reduction. Okay, uh, E not reduction. So the more positive the value, the stronger the oxidizing agent. Okay, alright. So let's go back to, kalau value dia positif, value dia sangat positif, maksudnya dia sendiri suka undergoes reduction. Okay, lagi positive value tu, lagi suka undergoes reduction. Kalau dia suka undergoes reduction, so dia itself adalah oxidizing agent. The stronger the oxidizing agent. Faham? Ha, same goes to kalau negative the value, kalau negative the value maksudnya, the more negative the value, it shows that dia tu tend ataupun prefers to uh, prefers oxidation more than reduction. That's why the, dia punya value tu negative. So kalau dia suka ataupun prefers the oxidation more than reduction, therefore it is the stronger reducing agent. So jangan pening dekat situ. Okay. Uh, pegang satu. So bila you dah tahu dia undergo oxidation, automatically dia jadi reducing agent. Tetapi, uh, be careful guys. Be careful. Okay, alright. Look at this example guys. This is the example, the equation kan for zinc lah. Okay, zinc. Zinc 2 plus, this is the equation, the reduction equation because zinc 2 plus accepts the 2 electron. Zinc 2 plus eh. We are not talking about zinc accept 2 electron. This is different than this. Kita tak ada ni. We don't have this. Zinc takkan accept dua elektron jadi zinc 2 minus. Mana ada? Okay, we don't have this. Okay, zinc 2 plus accepts two electron to become zinc solid. Okay, alright. So this is what we call oxidizing agent and this is what we call reducing agent. Okay, so as you can see, kebolehan dia untuk reduce adalah negative 0.76. Maksudnya dia dia negative value dekat situ. It shows that it prefers oxidation. Okay. So zinc 2 plus, okay, logically speaking, zinc 2 plus can only undergo reduction. Zinc pula on the other hand can only undergo oxidation. Like I said, zinc takkan accept dua elektron to become zinc 2 minus. No. Okay, this is very, very unpreferable. So, this is not possible. So, tak ada case lah ni. Ni, ni tak ada case. Okay, so how it is measured guys? So, zinc 2 plus. 
Okay. Uh, okay, let's look at the statement here. The strength of zinc as reducing agent is negative 0.76 volt and the strength of zinc 2 plus as oxidizing agent is also negative 0.76 volt. Value dia tu tetap sama in terms of reducing agent ataupun oxidizing agent. Okay, note that the value used is similar as we are using reduction potential based on SRP table without reversing to the oxidation e equation. But what we can conclude is that, that therefore zinc is a strong reducing agent, guys. Okay, zinc is a strong reducing agent while zinc 2 plus is a weak oxidizing agent. Okay, because kita tahu zinc, zinc suka oxidize. Zinc solid prefers oxidation. Zinc 2 plus memang dia boleh undergo, un, dia boleh accept the electron to become zinc. But this is unpreferable guys. This is unpreferable. Dia tak prefer. Tapi dia boleh buat, dia tak prefer. Dia rather zinc tu oxidize. Zinc undergoes oxidation. Okay, that's why kita kata zinc is a good reducing agent ataupun stronger reducing agent but weak. Lalu, excited. Okay, but weak ataupun weaker. So, uh, zinc 2 plus is a weaker oxidizing agent. Okay, faham eh? So, dalam satu equation tu sebenarnya kita ada oxidizing agent dan kita ada juga reducing agent. Tapi cuma kita nak tahu dia yang mana yang lebih dominant in the equation. Zinc 2 plus ke sebagai stronger uh, oxidizing agent ataupun reducing agent dia sebagai stronger. Okay. Uh, so kita kena tengok based on dia punya ni lah. Uh, based on this, this is uh, the the apa nama tu? The conclusion, zinc is a stronger reducing agent because zinc prefers to undergo oxidation. Okay, uh, uh, to become zinc 2 plus rather than zinc 2 plus accept the electron becoming zinc. Uh, so this is not preferable, not preferable. Maksudnya zinc 2 plus is a very weak, uh, very weak, uh, dia nak undergo seduction kan, oxidizing agent, very weak oxidizing agent. Okay, but very strong, but zinc, uh, zinc, bila you cakap tu, you jangan, jangan ter, ter confuse zinc tu plus ke zinc, you kena specify macam tu. But zinc is a stronger reducing agent. Okay, faham tak? Uh, so, kita boleh based on this one lah. Okay, alright, so as we go up, lagi negative the value, maksudnya, the 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 oxidizing agent become weaker okay ah uh, become weaker maksudnya dia dia tak prefer reduce yang atas atas ni dia tak prefer reduce okay lithium ni dia tak prefer to undergo reduction to become lithium tapi lithium solid ataupun lithium atom prefers undergo oxidation okay so going up become weaker oxidizing agent tapi stronger reducing Agent have higher tendency to oxidize. Okay, uh, cuma student dia bila nak sebut tu nanti kan dia tak tahu nak sebut lithium ke lithium plus. Okay, uh, so lithium in terms of this lithium maksudnya dia adalah reducing agent. Tapi lithium plus dia adalah sebagai oxidizing agent. Sebab lithium plus can only accept electron to become lithium. Dia tak akan buang lagi elektron. Mana ada you lithium plus, okay, you buang elektron jadi lithium 2 plus. You pernah jumpa ke lithium 2 plus? Mana ada lithium 2 plus? Okay, there is either lithium uh, atom ataupun lithium plus. Okay, so lithium plus can only, lithium plus can only undergo reduction. Lithium on the other hand can only undergo oxidation. Faham? So di lithium tak akan uh, tambah elektron jadi lithium minus. You pernah jumpa ke lithium minus? 
Mana ada. That's why nama dia reducing agent. It can only undergo oxidation. Tapi dia reducing agent. Tapi antara dua ni, yang mana lebih kuat? Mana higher tendency? Mana dia prefer? To become more, to become stronger reducing agent ataupun weaker oxidizing agent. Okay. Uh, and kalau menurun tu dia terbalik lah. Stronger oxidizing agent, higher tendency to reduce, weaker reducing agent. Okay. So I think we are going to stop now. Okay, we have example here, checkpoint. Okay, contohlah. Let's go through one one example so that you get an idea of it. Okay, so these are the 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 zinc and copper. So this one we extract from the SRP punya table. Okay, okay, from the value. Nampak value dia dekat sini. Kita dah ada idea dah dekat sini. Oh, kita boleh kata the negative the value. Okay, it shows that uh, apa nama tu uh, zinc sebenarnya prefer to undergo oxidation. Zinc, zinc kita tahu kan metal kan dia prefer to undergo oxidation. So that's why lah dia punya value negative. Dia tak prefer undergo oxidation, eh reduction. Nampak? Zinc accept to E to become zinc. Tapi still kita measure, kita boleh measure dalam bentuk reduction. But this is the value lah, negative 0.76. And this is more positive. Okay, it shows that copper to plus, okay, prefers to undergo oxidation, eh, reduction. Maksudnya dia accept to become copper. But this one, dia tak prefer sebab the negative value. Okay, alright. So, identify which species is the stronger oxidizing agent. So, you can identify siapa oxidizing agent, kemungkinan oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent means yang akan undergo, dia sendiri akan undergo reduction. Siapa yang akan undergo reduction? B, dua ni. Zinc 2 plus atau N, copper 2 plus. But between, bukan zinc ataupun copper. This is not the case. D, ini cerita... Uh, siapa? Reducing agent. Okay, so that's why dalam satu equation tu dia ada oxidizing agent, dia ada reducing agent. So sekarang tengah cerita stronger oxidizing agent yang undergoes reduction. So dia dua orang ni saja, bukan zinc, bukan copper, bukan atom. Dia dalam bentuk ion. Okay, antara these two, which one is stronger oxidizing agent? Kalau stronger oxidizing agent, the one that undergoes reduction. Okay, the one that undergoes reduction. So, siapa yang lebih suka undergoes reduction, value dia should be more positive. So, between these two, siapa yang more positive? Copper to plus. Okay, has more positive potential value. So, the answer should be copper to plus guys. Don't write copper. Okay, student kadang-kadang dia tahu tapi dia copper to plus dengan copper, dia pergi letak copper. Salah, it should be copper to plus. Okay. Okay, point for you to, to, to complete on your own. We will discuss it next week. Okay, alright. So, ada soalan ke so far guys? Tempat nak tanya soalan. Excited sangat madam macam itu ya. Eh? Ada ke so far? Okay, so I'll upload the video uh, by today so that you can maybe do some revision. Okay, jangan tunggu lama-lama tak faham terus tanya ataupun terus uh, do something about it. Okay, if there's no question, then let's proceed to our uh, apa, test discussion. Okay, tak ada soalan eh? Tua, tak ada soalan? Do you have questions so far? No, my dear. Okay, eh? Alright, so there's no question. Let's stop the recording now.